Stop trying to make me giggle, Mr. O'Connor. We're record. Are we record? We are recording. <laughs> we are recording. I'm Adrian. He's Shane, and you are most welcome. Welcome to the Comedy Slab. If it's your first, here's the simple formula. It's probably the first show I've ever worked on that could be described in one sentence. So it's, it was long overdue. Usually, I go for uh, more complicated concepts, and everyone trips up on them, particularly me. Here's the concept. We take a different show each week. We take it in turns to set homework the previous week. All to, I've already made it sound more difficult than <laughs> You want to explain? I got it. We got a pen. It started so well. <laughs> Which week are we in there? <laughs> oh, actually, it's a big birthday today, isn't it? This is show number oh, yeah. four zero forty. Are we, have we so, reached middle age, do you think, as a podcast now? Is well, that, we've certainly had a crisis, that's for sure. Yes, every so, week. Um, uh, well, life life begins at Comedy Slab. So, mm-hmm. different show each week. We review it. We play you uh, three audio clips. Uh, so, whether or not you've uh, ever seen or heard the show, it could be TV, radio, podcast, whatever. Um, you will get up to speed because we will help you in. We're very kind like that, aren't we, Shane? Yeah. Deep down. Uh, the other thing is as well. I think we're we're quite unique as a review show because mm. we tend to like more than we don't. I think we're, we're we're both lovers of comedy, aren't we? And I think I think. For a you moment, know. I thought you were going to stop at the word lovers. We're both I lovers. I got slightly <laughs> worried. <laughs> we're both lovers, not fighters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a fighter, frankly. But it, but it is. Um, it, it ends up. I mean, I never, I never wanted to be involved in something this positive, but it ends up that. <laughs> <laughs> I've found your weak spot, or is it your sweet spot? Honestly, if my mum could see me now, she'd be she'd be livid. But so she'd no, say, "Where did she go wrong with you?" Yeah, she said, I, "I brought him up to be bitter and twisted." What's the matter with the lad? Most um, of the time, to be fair to her, rest her soul, it actually works. It does actually, yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. No, <laughs> I, I think. Do you know what? In the modern world, comedy for me is my antidote. I think that's. That's, do, do, you must feel the same. So you're talking about your mum, not your auntie. <laughs> that <laughs> no, only works if you're from the Midlands or the further north. north. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, don't you think? Is you know, you, you, that's it's escapism. Oh, yeah. It's it cheers you. It's all of those things, those good things, all in one. I think that's, that's yeah. And I've always used it for that. Well, I, I think you know, without comedy, I couldn't see an awful lot of point living. Really, right? There'd be too much. Um, as Victoria Wood said, you know, words to the effect. Um, <laughs> as he tries uh, immediately, um, something like, if it wasn't for comedy, all we'd have would be, I think she described it in, in female terms, just period pain and uh, the menopause, and that would be it, really, right. the toothache. Um, so, yes, it does counterbalance those uh, less pleasant things in life. So are you listening, comedy commissioners? Do you want this man's death on your hands? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> No? Well, then carry on doing what you're doing. Go back into work on Monday. I I thought you were going to try and get them to commission and or sponsor the Comedy Slab. That'd be rather nice. (laughs) One day. One day, eh? (laughs) Please don't have. Anyway, so the homework last week was set by you, wasn't it? It was indeed. Yeah, it's... it's, uh, Sorry, I keep trying. We should explain. We are... How far apart are we? I mean, not emotionally, but in uh, miles, 150 odd. Men- mentally, do you mean? Or, uh, <laughs> Differently. Emo- emotionally, mentally, I mean, and geographically. They're all different, aren't they? They're all different numbers. <laughs> I think the, the key number there, I was trying to get out of you, that you, you sidetracked. You've obviously given up on geography long since. About 150 miles uh, lies between us and uh, a piece of copper, or as of this week, fibre optic. Thank you very much. Yeah, and it's uh, not copper my end either. I've, oh, I've not got, got a copper end anymore. I, I've, uh, well, I've got a short bit of copper, if I may. I'm, so I'm just floating in the airwaves. I am. Well, look at me. I don't know where I am. Yeah, you're virtual. Anyway, he's <laughs> up in the Midlands. I'm down south. And yes, let's talk about the show we are slabbing this week. Meet David Sedaris. And if you're not aware, and I'm, uh, I've had to get up to speed on David Sedaris because I've only known him... As a radio listener, he's now had, he's into his seventh series on BBC Radio 4. Mm. So as we speak, this show is available on BBC Sounds, both the app, certainly within the UK, and I think you should be able to stream it outside the UK via bbc.com. And again, it it got my blood pressure up because there was a great big long list of all the other episodes from all the other series, none of which are available on the BBC website. So that was a, a waste of somebody sitting down and, filling in those pages because what was the point i don't understand it goes like oh series two click on series two. Oh, episode three i really fancy that no none of them are available it's all just a ploy this is in the midlands we have in theaters 
<laughs> boom, boom. Well, I'm from the, the, the posh part of England where um, uh, uh, sex is something you put your rubbish in. Anyway, that didn't really work the way I said it, but moving on. As you've gathered, neither of us uh, is a comedian, but we do love our comedy. And interestingly, David Sedaris is described as a comedian. I, on the basis of this show, I don't think he is. He's a, he's a good essayist. He's obviously a writer. Mm. I would call him a raconteur. He reads his own uh, essays. Our essay sounds a very uh, uninviting term because it makes you think of homework. But um, uh, he's obviously working from a, a script for the greater proportion of the show. Um, and we're going to hear the first of, uh, as I say, three clips in, in just a mo. You don't really want to give too much away as to your reaction. No, other than to say that you got his name wrong. It's Sedaris. No, you see, <laughs> I've... Yeah, Rotter, don't try and tempt me. This was an off-air discussion, a pre-record discussion. It's definitely Sedaris. I've written it in my own um, phonetic uh, pronunciation guide. All right, all right, then, hang on a second. Phonetic. All right, then, hang on a second. I didn't hang pick on, up on it. Don't think I did. Um, <laughs> for five slabberoo points... Yes. You mentioned the announcer at the start. The announcer says David Sedaris. Yes. Who is the announcer? And it's have you ever worked with her? I, uh, it's Susan Ray. And well yes, done. she oh, was, you uh, yeah, you're not going to floor me on that as a former announcer myself. In fact, did I see her this morning? I don't think she was on duty this morning. Um, but, is that what uh, she's doing there? She could do no wrong. I mean, I mean, literally got to the point where I opened the fridge and she was sat there. <laughs> Next to what the would ham, you like reading, to eat? <laughs> read, different a voiceover. She 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 had this like prolific period of time. She she revoiced a, a Canadian crime program that I uh, a documentary program that I used to watch and that I'd seen in Canada. And then they started showing it over here. And I thought, oh, Susan Ray's on that. And then she was on Radio Four. And then she does this. And she was doing tons of stuff. She doesn't seem to be as popular now, though. Does she? She calmed down a bit. She just she just <laughs> doing Radio Four. I, I, look, I don't know if it's about popularity or. She might be doing stuff that you and I don't hear, but certainly she's... Um... What, you mean like dog whistles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you get to our age, you start yeah. to, to lose the, the well, HF. There is, there's that alarm, frequency. isn't there? Do you remember that alarm that they got for kids to stop kids hanging around outside shops and, and oh, old yeah. people can't hear it? Well, allegedly. Yeah, but all you get then is loads of misbehaving old people <laughs> with their hearing aids turned off. I've tried it. Anyway, it's a little known fact, since we're on the lovely Susan Ray, yeah. um, that she had a TV career as well. You've only mentioned uh, sort of out of vision stuff, as we call it, oeuvre. But um, I actually, when I was a uh, sound engineer at BBC TV Centre in West London, uh, I actually worked on a show with her. Now, that is going back some time. What was it? Um, oh, now you ask me. I don't remember, but I do remember her um, being the presenter. That's yeah. a good question. I'll have to ask. I've got a conversational um, talking point now uh, when we're making teas next to each other in the oh. BBC oh, kitchen. Susan, if you're listening, I'm sorry. He's going to be <laughs> bothering you now and asking you questions. It'll be, it'll be a short hop, skip and a jump away from, can I have your autograph? You trust me. See if he doesn't. And it's all going to end in court. So before it does, <laughs> yeah. let us get into clip number one. Now, handily, I don't know if you spotted this, Shane, because mm. um, I did go right up to the wire, as is my wont. I was, uh, we, whoever suggests the show is then in charge. They're, they're head of clippery. So I had to uh, find three minute-ish chunks of meat David Sedaris. I should say it's Series 7, uh, Episode 2 uh, mm. that we're delving into. And um, I uh, admittedly, I was quite late getting it to you. I'm not convinced you'll have worked out why I've chosen the ones I have. Three chunks, three different types of sections. I'm putting you on the spot here because you yeah, no, I thought I thought you were right. Yeah, there was there was one one of him with his like doing a monologue. Um, yeah, the main part. There was one part from the Q and A, and there was one part from his diary. Wasn't there? Is that how it kind of worked? Yeah, not necessarily in that order. Yes, you got the diary and Q and A. All the right but words, yeah. not, <laughs> not necessarily, necessarily. In the right order. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you think ever since ideal, ever since I've got to tell you, if you're listening and you haven't you haven't been following along, but ever since we recorded one about ideal episode 27 um, of the uh, the comedy slab, um, and I I admitted to the fact that I I didn't I didn't realise ideal because he deals drugs ideal. I never Get really it. got the, the idea of that. Yeah, 
And uh, and ever since then, he thinks I'm thick. Oh, sorry. Was I meant to say something there and, and deny it? <laughs> I think the silence will speak for <laughs> itself. Uh, no, um, nothing has changed in how I perceive your <laughs> vast intelligence. <laughs> just because you talk like that. Come on, play the clip. Right, let's play it. Well, I just got to talk us into it. And I, I'm afraid, sorry, I have to refer to my notes. See, I'm the thick one here. Um, so, setting the scene. Mm. Uh, this is from the monologue, uh, which, as Shane alluded to, is the greater proportion of the show. It's actually about 22 minutes out of 28, 29 minutes. Um, so, he's talking about a former member of the audience, a guy called Pete, who helped him out with a printer cartridge once. But the setup is that David uh, Sedaris at the top of the show says he wants to become a godfather or at least he takes us back to a point in time where that was a future wish of his so this uh, former member of the audience uh, he bumps in, uh, david sedaris meets him at another gig and it sounds a little like this six months later i did a show in buffalo and saw pete again by this time he and his girlfriend danielle had married she's pregnant he announced we're gonna have a baby can you believe it who's the godfather going to be i asked we haven't thought that far, Danielle said. Maybe you should be. Sold, I told them. <laughs> I maybe should have hesitated, as it's a big commitment, at least when it's done correctly. Crummy godparents gradually fade away, though I once knew a woman who took it one step further and announced after two years that she didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> she quit her job <laughs> as a godmother. The friendship with the parents didn't survive, of course. How could it? For the first few years of Tommy's life, Pete, who suffers from chronic back pain, stayed home and took care of him. This while Danielle taught third grade. A second son was born a few years later and turned out to be autistic. Not the kind who's great at math and avoids eye contact, but the kind who never, for one moment, stops moving. So, you know, that's what I love about David Sedaris as well, is that, is that he... He says and shares things that possibly aren't as politically correct as they should be these days. And, and, and I thought that was a really good example, you know, when he was talking mm. about uh, autism, you know, not the kind that's good at math. You know, you're thinking the Rain Man kind of autism. It was right, it was yeah. much more challenging than that. But he's got, he has an honesty, um, aside from his humour. I think he – and that really comes out there. I think he, he very often do, – do you get the other sense that he kind of says – or even though he's he will have sat down and thought it through and written it and read it back, and an editor will have written it and they'd have made any adjustments, it still manages to be, it feel like what comes out of his head and out of his mouth almost spontaneously. Do you get that? Uh, I hadn't really thought about that a lot. I don't. Mm, I'm not sure I agree actually because it does. I, I, you are aware. I mean, he's not making any illusion about it. You are aware he's reading it from the page. Well, it's his, it's his um, book. I, I didn't know whether you knew this or not. But no, he, I didn't. The, I didn't right. the, these, I'm, I, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've read every book that he's written. Really? Yeah. Um, I love his stuff. I, I've just finished Calypso, which is his, his latest one. And you, I think you know I, I, I listen in audio. <laughs> My wife, Angelina, always says, well, it's not reading, is it? You, you've, you've had his book read to you by him. <laughs> Or something, oh, yeah, yeah I mean, but it's the same as reading it. No, it's not. It's not. He's read it to you. That's. It's like a bedtime story. No, it's not. I'm 53. <laughs> it's not a bedtime story. I'm just. I did it while I'm doing the washing up. I wasn't. Be- but See, yeah, I'm so with I- your wife. I think you're being unnecessarily defensive. So, you, yeah. just, you can't say I've read a book when you've listened to a book. You you don't think so either. No, I, but I generally side with your wife against you. You do. I fairness. think that's just generally it's a good policy. Yeah. Anyway, so I've I've had. All of his books read to me <laughs> by him, uh, which by is him, nice. By him, yeah. Which is, what which have you been famous? doing in bed with David Sedaris, a oh, known God. homosexual? Oh, I just throw that in. He's uh, <laughs> he's very good company. I love you. Well, know. He's, clearly, uh, clearly. As long as as long as Hugh doesn't find out, he'll be uh, he'll be fine. Um, that's his partner, by the way. Um, oh I yes, mean, and and you get to know an awful lot about the bloke because because he is so forthright and so honest. Um, mm. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, and I just saw that clip. It just—it's you know—he says what he's thinking, and I think I think a lot of the time that's where the comedy comes from as well. I agree with you though. It's not—he's not a comedian, is he? 
Well, not on the basis of what I've heard. Uh, unless he's got some other... I mean, I, you know, there's no sense it's stand-up other than he might be standing up, he might be sitting down, but in no <laughs> other sense is it... And I, I think actually it suffers from that because he can't, he can't depart from the script. It's a, book, a it's a book reading, though. You know, yeah, if you imagine yeah. if you went to a book reading and, and, yeah. and if, maybe if you saw him um, sort of a la Ronnie mm. Corbett, you know, sat in the chair but reading from his book... Now you're talking about something I really appreciate. You know having I mean? worked with Ronnie and having been a massive fan as a kid of Ronnie in the chair, the difference there is... Actually, no, I don't think that's a good analogy because, I mean, as a kid, I wouldn't have known about scripting and how every last word was scripted mm. by Spike Mullins, former painter and decorator who was persuaded to go pro as a comedy writer, um, I think I think it was he who didn't go pro until about in, in his forties. Right. Um, that doesn't really happen in showbiz these days. No. Uh, you're washed up by twenty nine these days if you haven't had a major hit. But I mean, um, I mean, the delivery. I was just thinking of if you if you that was like the visual. If you imagine him on stage, that's mm. all there would be. Would be him sat in a chair reading his book. There are yeah. no. I think you mentioned last week and said there are no cutaways. There are no. Uh, you know, there's 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 no yeah, other element no, to it yeah. at all, is there? Yeah. So obviously, it it uh, you know for personal preference, it I it um, lives or dies by whether you like what's on offer. Because what you've just heard is is pretty much it in terms of um, delivery. Mm. Um, it's a funny thing here. I think we've got a bit of role reversal, darling. Whereby I suggested this because I quite enjoyed it. Actually, my first experience of hearing this was you talk about how comedy gives you. <laughs> <laughs> some light relief. I was listening to this in the car week after week on the way to um, marriage guidance, as it used to be called. <laughs> um, although it managed to guide us into a ditch, but never mind. Um, yeah. we're, we're headed for one anyway. Um, no, in all seriousness, it was worth doing because uh, we're on um, good terms, but we are separated. But it certainly was... Um, it just made me chuckle while I was driving and not an awful lot uh, other than some decent comedy would have done. But no, here's no. the thing... Sorry. Oh, go on. I'm just going to carry on. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to say, I'd never heard, but I mean, that was, that was how I listened. I just dipped into it, dipped out again, parked the car, took a deep breath and walked to the, um, the, the, the counselling area. Um, I'd never heard a, an entire edition beginning to end. And <laughs> actually, uh, I'm a great believer in the phrase, less is more. Mm. And I'm sorry to say more is slightly less in this case. Um, oh, okay. I still enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. And if it was ever on again, I would keep it on. In fact, I turned it on randomly the next episode. Um, was it last night or tonight? Um, just doing my usual, make a cup of tea, put the radio on automatically as an addict. Mm. Uh, and there he was, and I was chuckling along again. So um, it's not a huge criticism. Here's the weird thing, though, about it all, is that, mm. is that I, one of the things I didn't like about what they've done with this, because it, I think it's actually a different production company that's producing it now. It's Giddy Goat, isn't it, that are doing, that's doing it now? Yes. And they weren't in the original uh, series. I think they may have come on board Series 4, Series 5. I've, I've actually completely missed Series 6. So I'm going to probably have to buy that from um, Audible. I think you can get all of his stuff on Audible. Okay. Um, and they, they never used it. The Q&A was never part of the programme. Right. Um, and and he he would just they would just time it so that he just read stuff from his books and from his diaries as well. Sometimes he put his diary in as well just to uh, to fill the time out. But but didn't do the Q Q and A stuff. So um, I just wonder what I was getting to rather clumsily. But what I was wondering whether you would have liked it more if they'd have done it in a fifteen minute slot. Might have done, yeah. Um. So, yeah, and, and actually, uh, you've in effect corrected me because I've made it sound like uh, it, it was only the monologue, but, um, well, we talked about the Q&A and the... Um, I mean, it's only it, sm small parts of the show, isn't it? I mean, it's only right yeah, at the end, really. It's last, just fill, last filling, in the, filling in the time, aren't they, by the sound of it? Yeah. So are you saying, or well, perhaps you didn't come down one side or the other, but... Um, before we hear the next clip, which we surely mm. must in a sec, um, are you saying you would have preferred it in its earlier, purer form without the Q and A and the diary reading? The diary stuff I quite like. The Q and A I, f I felt was a bit superfluous. I don't, I don't, you know, really need 
um, questions from the audience um, didn't didn't really do it for me. I, I, you know, um, yeah. I mean, I think he, he is a funny guy. I mean, I, it, and and um, probably in years gone by, you would have used used the same. You don't hear it so much now, do you? But he's a great raconteur, isn't he? I mean, he's yeah, raconteur. Yeah, I do like that term. Um, yes, it probably has fallen out of use a bit, but uh, yeah, I think it's a category error to call him a comedian. Pro- probably when Peter Ustinov died, that was that was when the the term was buried with him, was it? Maybe I, d- I, I don't know. But but mm. see, I I really like his delivery. I like his voice. I like the way he reads. Um, and I've got, I've got having interviewed people. I've interviewed writers um, previously. Um, and th- th- you know they can be not great to chat to because because yeah. they because they write that's their they, that's they, their they skill. lock themselves away in a room and they're quite antisocial creatures uh, yeah. some of them not all of them but. And, and, and I don't mean that's it's a bit like saying to to a, a painter say well you're not much of a tap dancer are you you know and and it, it, it's not a criticism I accept that's what they do but unusually I think he has a great presence and ability to to tell his own stories. However, again, that divides the O'Connor household because my wife can't stand to listen to him because um, she says, oh, is that that bloke that sounds like a woman again? <laughs> no. But but yeah. he's, he's actually said that. I mean, he in his books, he's actually said that, you know, I'm aware that my voice is... He's very feminine, and I and, and I get mistaken. Actually, I he, think I think the first time I heard him, yeah, switching on the radio in the car, um, I hadn't. I, it took me a while to work out, male or female. Yeah, but he he said very often on the phone, you know, he'll have Mrs. Sedaris, and uh, the, 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 because they don't know whether he's a man or a woman. But you know, so he's mm. he's quite comfortable with his millions. I would have thought, but um, mm. but yeah, so he divides our house. She she can't bear to listen to him. So, well, she won't be listening to this, will we? Will she? She can't bear to listen to you either, to be I, honest. So that's, I, I that's, a, that. that's I mean, at least two reasons not to listen. Right, we move on to clip number two. So um, this is the diary section, which is, uh, you know, he's still reading off a script. So um, uh, let me remind myself how I was going to set this up. Um, chat amongst yourselves for a brief second. I'm ready. Oh, yes. <laughs> I could have committed this to memory. I've written down, now a section in which David reads from his diary. <laughs> April 23rd, 2018, St. Louis. Adam met me at the baggage claim yesterday afternoon, and together we headed to the airport's multi-level parking deck. This involved taking an elevator, and we just stepped inside one and pressed a button for our floor when a voice called, Wait! It was a woman with two daughters, age maybe eight and ten. Adam held the closing doors and the girls ran in beside us, panting. Their mother, meanwhile, who was pushing a luggage cart, looked back in the direction she had come from, at her husband, I supposed, who was still a good distance away. The door started to close again and she yelled to her daughters in a panicky voice, Three! Go to level three! Go to level three and wait for us there! As the door closed further, I said to the woman, what have to be the scariest words any parent can hear? They're our girls now. (laughs) He he loves to shock as well, doesn't he? That's the other thing I meant to say. Uh, As well as not being too PC. Um, He does uh, does love to to shock as well. yeah, I, I always love these diary bits because you never know which which are the true bits and which are the the bits that he's done for effect. I did wonder about that. Does it matter to you, or as long as it gets a laugh and he says it vaguely convincingly, does that is that sufficient? Yeah, because it, it, it's to me, it's all a glimpse into his world, isn't it? And it, part of that world is his imagination. So it doesn't it doesn't does it give you a problem? It doesn't give me a problem. Well, the truth is we're never going to know, are we? We're never going to know the truth is the truth. Yeah. So, um, no, I, I mean, uh, there's such a thing as artistic licence and uh, I've got 12 points on mine. Um, but uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so, yeah, you have to cut someone some slack, don't you? Otherwise, uh, life's not always quite that neat. No, no. Um, the one thing the show doesn't do and the books do and I, I, I say the show doesn't. I mean, I've not heard all the episodes, obviously. 
Mm. Um, but he is very honest and forthright with his life. I mean, he and and this this was a particularly um, lightweight, I suppose, episode. I mean, in recently in his latest book in, in Calypso, he he talks about um, his sister's death; she committed suicide. Right, and and he kind of talks about that and about the time that they went to collect her belongings after and found out where she was living, and she I think she'd been using drugs and stuff like that. So it's not all. It's not all a, a laugh a minute, but it, like I say, it's in, it's a wonderful insight into this guy. And of course, it all stands or falls, as we always say, on whether you like him, doesn't it? I mean, if you don't, yeah, if you don't, yeah. you don't like the guy, you're not going to care one way or the other, I guess. Yeah, I mean, do you think it, it's in the right slot? Should it be in a um, comedy slot, or um, I don't mean here, but I mean on on the BBC six thirty evening slot? Well, I think if you put if you put the likes of um, Sarah Kendall from episode ten of the Comedy Slab, uh, it the was Australian... only a matter of time before she was going to be mentioned. Your girlfriend, yeah, yes, <laughs> the, the, that's your girlfriend. That is. <laughs> that is. Um, see that woman. Yeah, you, you see that tramp in the park. That's <laughs> you. That is. Um, I used to love that. I used to yeah. make for hours. We used to we used to <laughs> make those up. Um, but if, if Sarah Kendler, uh, what was it, Australian Trilogy, I think, was that, which, yeah, again, was, yeah. was one of your, that you chose, um, and I'm glad you did, because, again, a great storyteller. Mm. Um, if she can be in the comedy slot, I suppose, wouldn't, wouldn't David Sedaris be in the comedy slot? Yeah, but I think you did raise the question, um, have you committed the episode number, our edition number for Sarah Kendall to memory? No, it's, it's episode 10. Right. Oh, another big anniversary. Um, I've got you the did ra- yeah, I think you raised the question in episode 10 of the Comedy Slab, which people can find because we're adding to the archive all the time. We are the Netflix of comedy review podcasts. Um, much as I might like to delete some of them, some of the things I've said. Um, anyway, my case comes up next Wednesday. But uh, you did raise the question, is it actually comedy? Uh, mm. Of Sarah Kendall, so surely that question has to be asked of David Sedaris. Yeah, and I think you're right to ask it. I mean, uh, I can't remember what I, what did I say about Sarah Kennedy, Kendall, 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 Kendall not Sarah Kennedy. That, that <laughs> That's is a comedy. slightly different act. <laughs> That's comedy gold. I that couldn't is. possibly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did like her payoff. Sarah Kennedy used to always say at the end of the show. We'll reconvene tomorrow if spared. And, of course, in the way of all freelance radio presenters, ultimately she wasn't spared, but we've both no. been there. No. Um, I, uh, so don't throw stones at glass houses. No, well, you just... you just. Um, I can't say what I really think. Um, <laughs> no. I'll tell you when we stop recording. Um, but there was, there was, oh, there was a, a huge difference between Sarah Kennedy and me, but... Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, okay, Sarah yeah. Kendall, who we were talking about, um, what was the what was the verdict on that? Did we decide it was comedy or not? Well, we carried on reviewing it, and you loved it. Um, I think it's the same thing. You I think it's light it. and shade, isn't it? Yeah, you, <laughs> you loved, loved it. it. <laughs> um, she got an eight and a half, actually. Um, Sarah Kendall did. So we must have both rather jolly well liked it, mustn't we? We jolly well did. But the thing is, uh, and this is, I think, quite a major difference. Uh, she's an actress, or if she doesn't like the term, an actor of a female persuasion. But okay, I yeah. think the word's there, let's use it. Um, so, uh, and that is where Sedaris uh, obviously doesn't worry you, and I get that. Um, I just find, yeah, his emotional range, his delivery range is limited. He's not an actor, but the same could be thrown at me. But you do notice the difference with Sarah Kendall, um, <laughs> that, that she has got that range, greater but, range. But depth. I do think that he... He, for somebody who's reading, I think he's got a great ability to read. I think not, somebody reading you, needs to have the ability to read, but no, no. <laughs> rather but, cheaply, but the, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean. That, you know, it, yeah. I think his delivery is good in terms of you know somebody. But I, I, the difference is, I guess, I came to it knowing what it is mm. because I've got a, a experience of all the other stuff he's written and the, and the way that he delivers those. Mm. I must try some of his stuff uh, off the page or off the screen. Uh, be interested to know. I mean, now I w- I'm sure I will hear it with his voice. 
um, it would be quite strange to start with the book. Did you start with the books not knowing what his voice was like? Have you? I mean, and I hear that you, uh, as your wife said, you know, you you were listening to audio books, but have you? Did you read him first off the page or screen? No, do you know it was when I was working in Coventry and I worked with um, a, a lovely lady called Vanessa. Mm. And we were chatting one day, and I was saying about how much I I said, oh, I really loved, because um, I'd got like an hour commute there and back, and I said, I really love audio books. I said, I listen to, listen to a lot of audio books, as you can imagine, um, while I'm in the car. Mm. And, uh, and she said to me, have you ever heard of David Sedaris? And I said, no, I've n- never heard of him. She said, well, if you get a chance, have a listen or, you know, track him down because I think it was series one or two had just come out, meet David Sedaris. And I said, oh, well, she said, I think you'd really like him. Mm. So I had a, had a listen and thought, oh, yeah, she's fantastic, really enjoyed it, and then got on to the book. So it was meet David Sedaris, the, the, the radio show, that got me there in the first place. I mean, he started in radio, curiously enough. I don't know if you know. Oh, well, so, I saw uh, Ira Glass is, uh, was his ticket to uh, the big time. But you're going back further. No, no, that's yeah, yeah, um, or as 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 they were known, Ira Glass half empty. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Ira Glass half full, in my opinion. NPR, which I don't know if you ever heard much of NPR in uh, in the states, but but can be quite um, grim. Mm. um, To to, somebody said, "Oh, it's a fairy tale." I said, "Yeah, grim." Uh, And um, (laughs) but yeah, so so, um. Yeah, he started with NPR. I would have thought I can understand why he would he would shine in that environment because it's it's not always good. There's there's one or two gems in NPR, but it's not always that great, is it? Really? Right. I used to have uh, it's been broken. I didn't mean to get it uh, fixed. My internet radio, although of course you can get internet radio on things that aren't a radio, but. Um, when I first turned, tuned into NPR, I thought, oh, this would be fantastic. I love American accents. Uh, uh, I want to hear something totally different. Of course, I'm listening in southeast England, so it's, mm. it's exotic to my ear. And the first thing I heard was, this is the BBC. Yeah. And they rebroadcast BBC World Service. I thought, well, that's a cheat. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's obviously not the full story. But, but I yeah, think they, they do it they, overnight, don't they, I think, from when I... When yeah, I, uh, yeah. I mean, there's quite a lot of talk radio in the States. When, when we've ever been over there, been driving in the car and that, and you put the talk radio on, it's normally on um, AM. AM radio is where all the talk stations are. Mm. Um, but the, it used to be, and the, the thing that I really miss, when they updated iTunes, uh, you know, your, your copy of iTunes on your computer or whatever, mm. um, you used to have a radio section. And you could listen to radio from all around the world, and no more. And uh, no, I don't. I wouldn't. I don't know if you can. I'm not really quite sure how to do it because they changed it or moved it or did something with it. So there you go. But uh, other apps are available. Anyway, high time to get on to our third and final audio clip. Mm. You up for that? And here's my very exotic uh, explanation and setup. A Q and A section starts with a slightly random question from an audience member. Um, what's the worst and the best piece of taxidermy you've ever seen? The best is that taxidermy kiwi that I saw. And I'm really hoping, I shouldn't be telling you this, but <laughs> someone you know was recently inducted into the American Academy of Arts and Letters, which is uh, only 250 people are allowed, and they're writers and they're visual artists and uh, Tony Morrison is a member, and I am Pei is a member, and somebody dies, and then somebody else is allowed in. So Philip Roth died, and I got the call. <laughs> and I think I think I deserve that kiwi as a gift. <laughs> Because the kiwi, actually, it was worth a lot of money, wasn't it? Because I'm just thinking, and people listen to that and thinking, stuffed kiwi as a gift. But it was, wasn't he said it was worth about 80 grand or something? Or? Well, whether it was worth it. No, I think um, you do need to listen to this show. So uh, Series 7, Episode 2 of uh, Meet David uh, Sedaris, uh, he does explain, he sees this, uh, I'm going to issue a spoiler if you're not careful. Do you want me to? Anyway, yeah, it's, yeah. it's about, it's, well, it's a comedy callback to... Uh, earlier um so the question actually isn't quite as random as it appears but then i did find myself hearing it again just then uh, finding myself 
not convinced that that question, this is a double negative, not convinced that it wasn't planted. So uh, suspecting it was a planted question. Right. Because uh, the way he just kicks off and it's it's like he doesn't miss a beat, which of course a professional, you would you would want them not to miss a beat, but I'm just suspicious. I, I, I don't know why it's in there really. I, it, it, it didn't ruin it for me, but I kind of thought... You know, they—they, they, I don't know why they had to have the Q and A bit in there. I, I, it, it's, it's almost like it takes me back to local, my local radio days when I wish someone people, would. You people oh, would say, people would say, uh, uh, right on the show, we want you to tell us this and tell us that, or uh, what's your favourite uh, sandwich spread or whatever. <laughs> and that's basically because I haven't got anything to tell you. Mm. And uh, or, or set up, so you're gonna have to, and and that's that Q and A thing kind of smacks of that. Really, it's like, oh, you know, we've got a bit of time to spare. What should we do? I know. Let's ask the audience what they think uh, or what they'd like to know. And and it's it's cheapens it. But it just, you know, like I say, it didn't ruin it for me. But I just thought it was it was a new twist, which I presume um, Giddy Go Productions have decided to to put in there, mm. um, and. Um, I didn't think it needed it personally. You know, I, th- I thought it was all right with it. Just just whack a few diary entries in there, great. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's partly. Uh, it takes me back to it. Frankie Howard used to do Q and A's at various stages of his career, probably more towards the end. Yeah. And he put it at the end of the show, and I thought he was very good with that. Uh, there's famous. I think it's probably his last TV appearance. I didn't live much longer afterwards. Uh, him performing in front of the Cambridge University crowd. So this students, he's got an entirely new generation. That's what's exciting about it. And I mm. saw him on a bit before that uh, particular show. I saw him on that tour, I think. So I'm, I'm glad I caught him before he... Was that what he talked about being at the establishment at Peter Cook's club? Oh, gosh. Um, it's quite a few years ago, of course. Uh, possibly. He said, well, I Peter just... Cook said, I'd like you to come and play at the establishment. And he said, and I said, wow, wow. I said, oh, wow. I, said, I, thought, I thought if I stumbled enough, he might mention money. <laughs> <laughs> Great guy. But, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I was, mm. his stand-up was fab, I, I, I must admit. But again, all scripted, wasn't it? it all scripted, the whole Yes, um, but the Q&A, I was going to say, the Q&A is the very moment where you can't fake it uh, if you're there in the audience. And, I, I mean, I suppose you could think everyone else around you was a plant but if you get your question uh, across then you know they are ad-libbing and frankly how there's no question he was uh, he, he he wasn't ad-libbing um, i always get confused with that phrase there's no question does that mean i should say he wasn't ad- there's no question he you know what there I was mean? no question he, <laughs> there is no question so but uh, i'm fine. not convinced with uh david Sedaris, Sedaris. it just seems to be a continuation of the same Delivery, right, um, and it never gets too exciting either. So it, he, I, I think, part for me, um, he's highly listenable. I, I know what you mean, and I think, mm. and, I, and I get what you're saying. But 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 I always think of him sitting there reading from his book, as it were. Mm. I do. I really relate to him, and you know, as you mentioned, I mean, to say that that I relate to. A, um, and we're about the same age, actually, I guess. But I was going to say, well, no, I think to... you're the kid, Burke. Apparently, no, he's sixty-two. Is he sixty-two? Oh. He's got he's got about nine years on me then. Um, so we're about the same. Which age. direction? Oh yeah, about the, about, the, <laughs> <laughs> about the same age. But yeah, I just seem like there are lots of things. I mean, I always think he's he's a liberal. There's no question about it. But I always think he's a liberal with a small L. Mm. And and I kind of there's there's lots of things that I really relate to. Um, he mentions, doesn't he? I think about the the litter picking that he does, because um, they actually named a dust cart after him, didn't they? After a refuge. I was reading truck. that. I, I I didn't know whether that was another Wikipedia wind up, but no, uh, that, that is, does that seem that to is be... yeah, that is true. He basically what happened was, and I think I think he talks about this in his late his late his last book uh, or his latest book, I should say, because um, I presume he's going to write some more. Um, mm. That he bought, I think he got a Fitbit or something like that, or some kind of, or an Apple Watch or something, you know, that, that, you know, lets you count your steps and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. And he decided to get fit. And then as he was walking around the lanes in his home in South Downs, he started noticing, as I've done living rurally as well, the amount of rubbish that people throw out their cars. Mm. And so he started collecting it. 
and the more he walked, the more he collected, the more he collected, the more impressed the council were, and they ended up naming a naming a refuse truck after him. That is true. Right. Um, yeah. But they don't um, pay him out of the council tax, though. No, dude, joking, aren't you? <laughs> they probably can't because he's a he's um he's not a British citizen. Oh yeah, so. and he's not unionized. So, um, yeah. Right. Uh, well, it must be that uh, evil hour where we actually have to uh, give the show uh, a star rating, our own impressions and uh, overall review. Um, mm. Star rating out of five each, which we attempt to toss up to a score out of ten. Who wants to go first? I have decided. Uh, well, you have decided who wants to go first? Or you've <laughs> no, decided I've, de- who... I've decided I'm going to ask you who wants to go first. No, I've decided on my star <laughs> rating, but I don't know whether to... Who did it last week? Um, who went first? I don't know. I think you went first last week, didn't you? Okay, it's your turn this week then. Oh, you. Oh, you right little... Oh, you monkey. Oh, do you want the short answer or the long answer? Um, I don't think I need the long answer if you give the short answer. It's going to be high, obviously. (laughs) My dad always used to do this and say, Dad, can I have have so-and-so, so-and-so? And And he'd go, do you want the long answer or the short (laughs) answer? (laughs) I'd go, the short answer, he'd go, no. I said, what's the long answer? He goes... No. <laughs> oh, very good. I see where your humour comes from. <laughs> Warped though it be. Um, these, these days you'd be able to pick up the phone and call social services, mate. And that suits Yeah, probably, out. yes. An incommunicative dad. You'd probably get <laughs> locked up. Okay, short answer, because you've already flannelled for two minutes. Right, short answer is four. <laughs> right. Four. I'll give it okay. four. I couldn't decide whether it's going to be four, four and a half, or five. It had to be four. Or four plus, but so why not four, a, four and a half or five? Where does he fall down for you then? I, I, um, poo. to me, uh, and I'm just judging it on this particular program, there is a bit mm. of an overlap between the books and, um, not always, but in the radio show. So you'll kind of go, Oh, I'm really looking forward to this. And then it's a letdown because you'd have, you'd have read it or had it read to you, mm. uh, via his, uh, his latest tome. So, there's that, um, and as I say, the the kind of the, you know the 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 watering it down with the the Q and A, I didn't like that at all. Really, mm-hmm. um, it wasn't broke. I don't know why they're trying to fix it. Really, uh, whether it was just another production company just trying to put their stamp on it. But um, yeah, I will give it a four. I mean, and again, because the, the comedy element, I think it also you'd have to I'd have to take you know the 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 the, the point off for all of those things. But is it strictly a comedy? I mean, it makes me laugh out loud in places. Yeah, me too. And when but, you least expect it, he's very good at at smuggling in a punchline when you're yeah. not looking for it. Oh, he's not afraid of a punchline, is he? He's no. quite he's quite good like that. Um, but yeah, so it's uh, whether it's strictly comedy in the in the strictest sense of the word. I mean, it's certainly entertainment, light entertainment. But yeah, I, mm. I think I'd four. I'm happy with four. Okay. Whether what he about be, you? We'll have to see. Um, uh, three from me. Holy um, moly. I know. What well, happened? I pre decided, you see, I'm not allowed to change, although it's very tempting, but I won't. What happened? Um, I think I heard the limitations. Uh, like I was saying, um, less is more, more is less. And I, t- I started to find him a bit annoying, but it is only a style thing. I've never met the guy. I'm sure he's lovely. Um, at one part, I, in fact, I've heard him in a couple of shows talk about being rich, and maybe it's a chip on my shoulder, but I, rich is a relative term anyway. We're all rich in some sense compared to the third world, perhaps, or mm. the emerging mm. markets, as we must now call them. But um, I, there's, a, there's a sort of, there's good cockiness on stage, and there's this cockiness that you think, I feel I want to take you down a peg or two. I'm not really proud of uh, thinking that, but I, I have felt it. And also, yeah, the fact that he's not an actor, so he hasn't got that range. I mean, I've kind of touched on that. I don't really need to mm. go into that uh, too much more. But see, I, very I, I see that as honesty that, that, when he says about her, because he, he's, you can't write about your home in the UK, your home in France, and your home in the United States without making some kind of allusions to the fact that you're quite well minted. Mm. Well, we could work it out if he didn't say it to me too. No, it's fine. It's it's probably me, not him, as usual. Um, I find it slightly unjust uh, when I know lots of actors struggling to stay afloat without taking really routine jobs between the less routine 
showbiz jobs. It's the communist um, in you coming out. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, Comrade. Yeah. Citizen Lacey. Citizen Lacey, the yeah. resident anyway, call minister. <laughs> it must be time for you to set next week's homework. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah, I've... Uh, oh, we just got... We're going to have to do so many of these podcasts because there's so many comedies out there. And do you know what? They keep making mm. them, which is a bit annoying, isn't it? They're really? rotters. You'd think they'd stop and just let us catch up. Well, they'd just have four weeks off, you know, like the French do. <laughs> you know, like yeah. just say, right, August, August <laughs> we're not doing anything. Yeah, OK. Um, all right. Um, I, I, you got me on a bit of a radio thing, and um, I've had to kind of willfully try and shake it off, not, not only just to kind of mix it up, really, more than anything. Not that I don't think radio is great, because it is. Mm. Um, and audio is great because it is. But we'll go back to the moving pictures, shall we? And it's one that I never um, really saw, never encountered, never, never. I, I saw that it was there, and I kept seeing trails for it. Um, it's a recent, a recent thing within the last couple of years. Certainly, it's done two series so far, uh, and it's a BBC comedy. Mm. Um, uh, I don't know if you caught it. It's called This Country. Oh yes, yes indeed. Did you watch any of it? I did. Oh, okay. I was going to use a well, natty you... phrase. I'll save that for next week's review. Oh, all right. Well, you're one up on me then, because all I've seen of it is the trails, and I know it's about young people and their struggles living in the countryside, rural teenagers, isn't it, or mm. rural youngsters. Mm. Um, I was a bit reluctant, because I thought, oh, it's, it's a mockumentary, mm. f- from what I can gather. And I thought, oh, I don't know, do we need to? But then if we exclude it on that basis, then we'll probably, you know, there's, there's another 600 that'll probably go with it. So I'm going to go with it and we'll, we'll go for uh, this country, probably because I haven't seen any of it. Series one, episode one, is that all right with you, baby? Oh, fine, right, yeah. Because there is a new series out, but that um, isn't there, I believe. Is that series well, two or? Oh no, I was just wondering then if if they're on to series three even, but it's certainly I could be. yeah, but they're on to no, no, it's fine though. So that will help everyone um, uh, start in the same place. Yeah, acclimatise. Yeah. That's the that's yeah. the phrase. Yeah, um, cool. Series one, episode one, and you, I'm presuming that it's on iPlayer. Then is that where you've? I don't. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. That'll I'm be not the fun, lie. won't it? Finding I, it. <laughs> Yeah, you'll have, to, you'll have to find the thing. What's the matter with you? Um, I yeah, think I don't yeah, we, we should bill you. If it turns out all our listeners have got to pay to, to view, pay-per-view, then um, yeah. we'll, we'll just send an invoice to you. Well, think of all the wonderful the wonderful catalogue that you're building up for yourself <laughs> if you are buying these. Like it. Nice try. Good deflection. You know, yeah. I could tell you were a footballer in your youth. I'm assuming you were. Right. Um, what a header. Okay, I'm just going to say, because um, you can do the social meds and all of that, I'm just oh, going to encourage people to subscribe, if I may. Um, I could list uh, something beginning with Spreaker and ending with iTunes, straight Apple Podcasts, but people can work out you have your favourite uh, podcast app or podcatcher, call it what you will. Um, and also, if you could recommend us to other people, uh, friends, family, whomever, um, that would be hugely appreciated. Thank you very much for listening. Over to you for uh, social meds. Yeah, I was just going to say, we try and uh, keep up to date on uh, social media, the old Twitter and the Facebook, uh, at Comedy Slab. Couldn't make it easier, could we, really? Not really. Uh, so that's it for another episode. We will see you next time. What are you going to be doing in the meantime? Well, no word of a lie. You'll think this is set up to a terrible gag. I was due to be painting tomorrow, um, oh. but unfortunately, um, some friends uh, can't make... I suppose I could do it on my own. I'm just lousy at it. But I'm actually going to get on the phone and try and find a painter turned tap dancer, uh, alluding to something you said earlier. You can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the callbacks oh, better than oh, you. Yeah, I did. I did. I remember it. I remember it. And I should be going back and reminding myself why ideal is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I am thick as mince. 